How did an attacker detonate an explosive device? What did the electronic components look like? What kind of explosive was used? Was it produced industrially or was it improvised? This and a lot more besides has to be investigated following bomb attacks. Improvised explosive devices, known as IEDs, represent a major hazard for soldiers in operational areas. After attacks, so-called weapons intelligence teams arrive to safeguard traces and evidence at the scene of the attack. Following the work at the crime scene, the so-called Level 1, the evidence is forensically examined in the laboratory, Level 2. Soldiers from various armed forces are learning how this works in the Dutch town of Zerstaberg. Almost 20 participants in the course, all of them experts in their own fields. One of them is Sergeant Cindy Boomer. Here at the training course, she and her comrades are brought to the same level of knowledge and learn to work together in an international team. The practical part of the course takes place in a training laboratory consisting of containers deployable to mission. Today, the military policewoman Cindy Boomer is responsible for evidence items. She prepares the evidence from the scene of the crime for examination. All the evidence is recorded in the system. She also checks whether the bags are damaged, whether label and contents match up. The relevant department stop by and collect the things. It's then transferred, so to speak, and also noted in the system so that I always have an overview as to who has what evidence at a given time. Warrant Officer Class 2, Ralph B., also a military policeman, collects evidence to be examined. Today, he is working in the forensics department. His item of investigation, a mobile telephone. Of course, we are able to identify fingerprints here. You naturally find a lot of fingerprints on the new types of mobile phones, which only have touch displays, and there's always DNA on them. Since you touch them with your mouth and nose, with your fingers and, there's a lot to be found. You can also find a lot inside a mobile phone. This is what Warrant Officer Class 1 Frank de Groot is responsible for. USB sticks, hard drives or mobile phones can contain a wealth of data that can be of great interest to the investigators. We can see what phone calls are made to which numbers uh, and perhaps the numbers are related in a phone book with names of people. Um, if you have that, if you have multiple phones you can extract them and with special tools you can see if there are links between the telephones, so you can create uh, an overview of the network. Uh, if one guy, bad boy, is on the head of a group, he probably makes a lot of phone calls to different people. Uh, we can make that visible. The forensic specialists can even recover information deleted on a data carrier, such as photos of chemicals in a workshop for bombs, as seen here. Those are deleted pictures. State-of-the-art technology also helps with fingerprints. For example, after an explosion or the effects of heat, fingerprints can be secured, either through chemical processes or, as here, by the use of special lamps. The forensic specialists have a wide range of possibilities to secure evidence, to track down perpetrators. Ralph B. has now secured the fingerprints on the mobile phone and is satisfied. Here's a really good trace. It's possible to detect the papillary lines from the fingerprint. Good. This is something you can work with. All the findings made by specialists after an attack can provide tangible benefits. For example, enemy networks can be tracked down and combated, or criminals convicted in civilian courts using conclusive evidence. Furthermore, suitable countermeasures ensure an increase in protection of the individual soldiers within the scope of the so-called force protection. 